Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. We've got a fairly windy day today. You can tell by the flag just blowing in the breeze. Uh, I've chose to fish a marsh system that is somewhat isolated. I know I wanted to go after gar. Uh, that's what I said yesterday, but uh, I really don't have much experience doing that. If some of y'all do gar fishing quite often, uh, do me a favor, go over to my Instagram page, send me a message, let me know. I wanna see what it is that y'all are doing and uh, maybe even possibly hook up for a fishing trip to go after those big suckers. But uh, as it stands right now, it'd just be too much of a liability uh, to the channel. And uh, if I get hurt trying to handle one of those guys on a kayak, especially these big ones that we have out here, then it's not gonna be too good. I'll be down and out and uh, there goes the videos as I uh, have to rest and recuperate. But uh, yeah, we're gonna come out here, uh, toss around a few lures inside the marsh grass and see if we can pull in anything that swims, mainly the redfish. Uh, that's just seems to be my specialty and I've also taken a liking to them. So welcome back to the channel. I hope you're gonna enjoy today's video. See if we can pull somebody over here trying to crush our friends the bait. Usually always good for at least one fish. So before we actually get into our area that we want to concentrate on, give a couple of casts right here at this little drain. Alrighty, perfect. Gosh, I just love being able to control this boat with precision. Uh oh, there's the thump. Oh my gosh, that must have been like a mullet or something. Honestly thought that was a a fish taking the the bait oh man cannot stress the importance of hitting these drains on your way to your fishing spot just a few casts that's all it's going to take it'll mean the difference between having a good start to the day and uh, going home skunked in case your spot doesn't produce Oh, there we go. Did the old switcherooski. Look at this. Little wannabe croaker. Buddy, you can't hide, man. You can't hide with the croakers. <laughs> oh my gosh, these guys. They are in abundance right now inside the marsh. Oh, I'm going to treat you like a bass. Hold on. We're... Whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Break dance fight, everybody. All right, enough. Dude, I can't, I can't even put my finger in his mouth. All right, that's it, we're, we're done. You don't need you to get yourself all hurt. So, that little fella, well, he ruined our trailer. Let's get another one, I need to make sure. Okay, so yeah, we're all still good. He took the trailer, didn't ruin it, he just took it. Okay, let's grab another one, and I forgot to put another package of, oh my gosh, Mark. I forgot to put another package of these inside. We've only got three left, so, uh, yeah. I'm gonna be heartbroken if we run out. <clears throat> really love using these things. A lot of y'all ask what type of knots do I use. 
I will make a video once I get off my lazy butt. Um, this one right here is just a trilene knot, also known as the uh, simple fisherman's knot. Very simple and effective. I do four twists and then that's it. Caught plenty of fish using this for it being like such a simple knot. Very fast and easy to tie. It holds and it gets the job done. No need to get all kind of crazy and special. There we go. Just like that. Now we can re put our trailer on. Just like that. Back in business. Ready to go. Thread that back through our rabbit fur. And uh, let's get back into action. Yeah, that was a blow up straight inside there. All right, let's get it through. One more cast. That wind is really making it hard to like get some accuracy. I mean, I can get it in there, but then it blows my line into the grass. It's almost like the only spot that I can really truly aim for without getting snagged into that grass. Alrighty, that is it. Let's uh, continue moving on. All right, well, we are here in the back lake that I wanted to cruise around in. We're gonna lower the trolling motor and just move around inside this skinny stuff, see what we can find. Let's just keep an eye on the grass line and uh, anything in between myself and there we'll go investigate see what's there at the same time I'm just gonna start blind casting a paddle tail something that I can keep in motion and after I use that I'll switch up to another lure that can stay in motion these back lakes here in this particular marsh system has a lot of grass at the bottom and uh, you can't see because of the muddy water but that's the wind has done its thing usually it'll get a little bit clear you'll have maybe six inches of visibility if you're lucky Today we're not lucky, but uh, let's uh, start casting. Oh my gosh, I hope that storm cloud passes without really messing with us. I just got here and I don't wanna have to leave. Oh, okay, there we go. That has got to be some reds right out there in the middle keep scanning and you shall see something like that eventually so i got my eye on them i'm definitely going to slow down the troll but hopefully just hopefully that's going to be some reds i don't know what else is going to make the mullet go crazy all i can do is fan cast there's like way too much wind ripple on top of the water but i know something is out here just make that long cast and hopefully we put it right in front of their nose whatever it was that made them mullet get scared there go some raindrops oh my gosh how did you got to be kidding me man gosh almighty all right well we got to put the gopro away uh, I can't afford for the mic to get messed up and we don't have a, uh, a waterproof door on the GoPro itself. So I'll be right back. Uh, if I catch anything, it'll be on the like rear facing GoPro that doesn't have a mic. So be right back. All right, we're back. That didn't last too long. Just a passerby cloud that felt the need to put a small damper in my day. I uh, have jumped out of the kayak because it just got way too shallow. I just walked around, cast on all the grass and stuff like that, and uh, really didn't get much of anything. Seeing a lot of bait activity like that right there. I was hoping that it would be reds. It's about the only thing that I've ever caught back here. 
nevertheless, we'll uh, do this. I'll walk around just a little bit longer and then start making my way back out into the uh, open water. Holy Look at that right there. My gosh, I just turned around and it got downright nasty. Let's take a look at the weather. My gosh, Mark. It, I didn't see this forecasted. Oh my gosh. All right, so 40% chance thunderstorms. Let's see. Uh, 13 miles an hour south southwest. 40% chance for about an hour. And that is the 40%. Let's just erase that and say it's a 100% chance. My gosh, okay, we're gonna lay down all the rods. Don't wanna be a lightning rod and uh, get the heck out of here. We're gonna turn this motor on full speed. We gotta get out of here quick. All right, let's get out of here. Hopefully we're gonna be able to beat that. My goodness gracious. baby oh my gosh we did not get skunked I cannot believe this all right let's kill the motor I don't want to keep going forward did not get skunked beautiful speckled trout right here stop you're gonna ruin your tail oh stop it bro look at oh my gosh look at that right there beautiful speckled trout sorry about the slime that he just got on the camera all right let's send this guy on his way who the hothead beautiful 17 18 inch speckled trout <laughs> Oh my gosh, I am so, so, so excited to have been able to catch that. Y'all just don't know. <sighs> Did we get rained on or what? My gosh. All right, now, star of the show today, it's the Bugs Hothead. Arguably the best bug out there. Arguably. Some of y'all may beg to differ with the uh, the curl tail. Either way, this guy is a true champion. Oh, yeah. Woo, baby, putting the ego net to some use. <laughs> oh my gosh. Talk about crushing it after the storm. Man, oh man. I mean, we had a lot of fresh water dumped on us, and we're working our way towards a slam. Let's turn this off. Oh, wow. Look at that right there. The hothead killing it. Oh, my gosh, yes. All righty. 
let's get this fella back into the water. He like, he really crushed this lure too. There we go. Look at that. Oh, whoa, whoa, bud. Alrighty, there he goes. We're gonna fight another day. Like something pushing that bait up right there. Man, my hands, they feel so horrible. They get pruned up and then when they start to dry, you got, it's like that sticky tacky feeling. Just nasty. So a uh, quick update, just put the hat back on. Also retied a new hothead because the flounder destroyed the other one. He removed the rabbit first. So we put that plus threw some shrimp pro cure on there. And uh, yeah, man, I'm, I, I am like seriously shocked that I was able to put the ego net to some work. Didn't think we were gonna even be able to pull it out today, but two keepers. Oh, did we pay dearly just to get, to get those guys. That is the first time I have ever been caught in a nasty storm. These pop-up storms for July, goodness gracious. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm at a loss for words normally right now and at the end of July too. Right now and August time frame is the dead of summer and you're talking about just hot, like super high heat and then no wind. So you just feel so sluggish that it makes you want to start turning to like night fishing, going to the jetties with the generator lights, maybe Sea Wolf Park, somewhere where there is lights to bring in bait fish. And then that in turn brings in the speckled trout and some of the other big game fish. But man, oh man, did we pay dearly today. Oh gosh, that was a good bite. I'm trying to go after flounder right now. I would love to catch a redfish to complete the slam. All right, let's uh, continue doing it. We just got this little bit of grass line. I may continue all the way on to the ramp, uh, meaning that I'm gonna follow the grass line rather than the channel. So uh, let's continue. That right there was like seriously the hardest rains that I have ever been caught up in. And oh my gosh, thank goodness. The Pelican case right here that I purchased to protect the camera and the drone and like all the, the expensive equipment to film out there on the water. Thank goodness it did its job. That was one of the things that I was really worried about. It's completely dry inside here. So super happy about that. And then check this out. The battery box got wet, like on the inside, rain forced itself in there. Got this battery charging right here and uh, dried it all up. This one is dried up as well, but that is why I spend the extra money to protect my investment. Uh, those lithium batteries, you cannot get lithium wet. And uh, I felt comfortable out there, even though the rain was coming down super hard. Um, I didn't worry not once that the batteries would possibly catch fire. You just never know. Um, so it's like a crap shoot. It could say, like the batteries could say that they are waterproof, but then again, you don't know until it actually happens. It happened. I mean, I don't know if y'all can see that here. Let's see if we can kind of get, let's see. Yeah, you can see the water in there. Pretty crazy. Yeah, so uh, that is going to do it for the video today. Thank you so much for uh, watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, for those of y'all that are new to the channel because of the Autopilot 136, just know that guy is hanging in there. I know I didn't talk much about how it performed out there in the rain. Uh, I had to paddle it. I mean, I'm not too sure what I was able to catch on film, but I had to paddle that bad boy through certain parts of the marsh. I couldn't even see, so I got disoriented whenever everything just happened in a flash, and uh, it was pretty crazy, but uh, I, I made it through there. I did have to hop out of the kayak at one point in time because I was trying to cruise with the trolling motor, 
and I ran aground, like not aground, but I ran into some uh, shallow mud and uh, the trolling motor, the head, basically turned before I could lift it up. And what it, it was basically stuck and I couldn't go anywhere uh, no matter what I tried to do. So I had to get out of the kayak, lift the kayak up and turn the trolling motor head so that it can come through that trolling motor well. And uh, that was just a nuisance. So be mindful. If you know you're gonna possibly run aground, it's best to just lift the trolling motor up and not have to worry about it. It was just like really fast thinking. Nothing that the kayak did wrong. It was just bad judgment on my part. Um, either way, bad judgment or not, uh, you don't wanna be caught in a pickle where you're having to get out of your watercraft during a time like that. So take it for what it's worth. Still a great kayak, uh, you know, positioning during the high winds and stuff like that was just perfect again. And uh, yeah, so that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I forgot what I was gonna say before I went off on a tangent. It was the fact that if you're new to the channel and you found your way over here because of the Autopilot 136, do me a favor, watch some of the other videos that I have on the Old Town Autopilot 136. Man, I don't know how many times I'm gonna say that. Watch that playlist. And if you enjoy those videos as well, consider subscribing and ringing that notification bell icon so that you'll know whenever I drop new videos. That is it. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to click that thumbs up button. And until next time, tight lines, y'all.